I never need to click again, I can maintain hyper focus, and I've become more organized and productive than ever before. And this is all because of Mac apps. The Mac is a good computer. But when you start integrating and using the best Mac apps, the computer becomes a great computer. These apps save me time and make me more efficient and more productive. Here are the 10 best apps for productivity in 2022. The first app I wanna talk about is called Alfred. Alfred is a quick search and find application. So for example, if I use my keybind, which is option plus, the Alfred window will pop up right here. And then if I need to go to Notion, I just type it in, bam. But you can see other things come up that might need to open. And I don't need to click any one of these things. Importantly, I can just do command three, command four, command five, and open. So if I wanted to open those, I just do command one and bam, I can open up notes. And why this is so powerful is, for example, if I want to normally open Ocean, I'll scroll down to the bottom bar here and I'll click it and I'll open it. It's so much faster if I just do that. Scrolling down and clicking it takes about three seconds. Opening Notion like this takes about half a second, maybe even less. And that over time will create and save you lots and lots of time. Now, if my thing I'm trying to open isn't on this bottom bar right here, I might have to go into, you know, this kind of folder over here and open here and kind of go into here. Uh, and if I just need to open it kind of via Alfred, which I just do plus to open a file. So when you do space bar, you can open a file and I can say temp work. Bam, and now I've just opened up my temp work, which is my folder that I do all my YouTube projects on. Some other quick tips, if you open up Alfred with your keybind, so for example, I wanna say, um, when did the moon landing happen? It'll just Google it. It'll figure out, okay, maybe this is a Google, and I can just hit this and Google instead. And then bam, I see, oh, the moon landing happened on July 16, 1969. Another cool thing is if you wanna see your clipboard history, you can do this, type in clipboard, and it'll show you kind of all your snippets that you've been copying recently. So another cool thing is the text expander thing. So if I go to uh, Alfred and the, when you type in Alfred, it opens the preferences, which is pretty cool. You can see I have a couple here. I've just kind of started to use this a little bit more like the left arrow key, uh, the right arrow key, for example. So whenever I type in the left arrow key like that, it'll auto correct to that, which is pretty cool. And it gives you the nice little sound. The other thing is a lot of times, like when I'm texting someone that I'm busy at the hospital, instead of typing, hey, I am busy at the hospital, I can just type in busy H and it auto corrects that to currently busy at the hospital. And you can do this and save time with tons of different little things as well. For example, you maybe you wanted to format an email, which is rejecting a sponsor offer or something like that, then you can do that as well. Okay, the next thing is the focus timer. And the focus timer is simply the best Pomodoro timer there is for your computer. And again, using Alfred, I'll, I'll open it up, focus timer, be focus pro, and it'll pop up on the top right here. And you can see right now it's set at the 50-10 interval. What I've also done is I've set up a 25-5 interval. So right here, if I want to do 25-5, I can switch between the two. And then to do that, all you need to do is you need to go to settings, go to intervals, and then just add activity types here and do a 25-5 and a 50-10. Uh, for the 25-5, again, it's 25 minutes of work, five minutes of break, 30 minute long break practice, and you get the long break after four intervals. For the 50-10, it's 50 minutes of work, 10 minute break, 30 minute long break, and you get the long break after two intervals. The only kind of annoying thing you need to do next is you need to go to this side panel here uh, and add a new kind of task. And then you can name this task 5010. Uh, and then what you need to do is go to uh, details, right click it, go to show details, and then you need to make the activity type one of these. And then you're kind of set forever, right? Then all you do is when you want to study something, you kind of go to, okay, I want to do the 5010. Let's go do it, hit play, and you'll start that. And that's pretty much it. My next favorite application is called Things, and Things simply is the best to-do list there is. Let's open that again with Alfred right here. Uh, and you can see I have an inbox, and this is where I put all my new things kind of for the day or for the week that are my random to-dos. Now, the reason I love Things is because there's these things called trackers. Uh, it's very easy to use, and it looks fantastic. I've tried many other to-do apps, including Apple's built-in to-do app, and this one is just so, so much better. So the first thing I would do is kind of to maximize your use of Things is go to Preferences and create whatever your quick entry keybind is. For me, it's just control space. So I just hit control space and I can enter anything like take, get, buy chicken. Chicken is awesome. And then you hit enter and that's in there, right? And you can do that from anywhere. So say if I'm browsing the internet or something like that, I can say, uh, I can go to things and say, do a video on the moon landing and continue to browse the internet and stuff like that. I was just studying EKGs there. Sorry about that. So set whatever you want to do here for your quick entry. Because remember, now we're building up some kind of superpowers. My option space, remember, is how I search things. And then I also have my, my control space now, which is my to-do lists. So we're getting pretty speedy here with the keybinds. 
What I would also do is when you first install it, there's an intro project that will appear on the top left here. Make sure to do that. And the way I use this is throughout the day, things pop up, things pop up in my head, and I'll just type them in on my phone or on this application here, and they'll kind of populate here. And then at the end of the week or kind of when I'm bored on a day, I'll kind of start dragging these things into things I want to do. So make a cool mini movie that would go into video ideas under YouTube, vlog more that would go into video ideas under YouTube, Philly Summer Vlog, again, video ideas under YouTube. Um, cancel a business card, that would be more income-y kind of stuff, uh, get artists to cre creating art, that's improved channel, and you can categorize these things, and then you can go into each category and start doing it. This is, again, one of the reasons I love things, because of the different categories of things you have. Some keybinds, which I like to do, so if I want to do different kind of keybinds, I can do Command S, which adds a date to certain things, and then the other thing I like to do is add a reminder once I've added the date. But the other thing you do, you can do Command K to complete it, and that'll just check it off. You can get pretty quick with these keybinds, right? You can do Command Shift M to categorize it, this would be a YouTube thing, so I could do YouTube and then you just hit enter so you don't have to click anything. And if you don't want to check off a to-do but you just want to get rid of it, you can do command option K and that'll just cross it off there. Next, we have Notion, which I think is the best all around application there is for taking notes. And Notion, I kind of have everything ever. Um, I have a bunch of these different little side lists. I'll just give you a quick tour of my Notion. I'm gonna make, hopefully in the sometimes near future, a big tour of all my kind of Notion stuff ever. So I have my video setup ideas, uh, inspiring quotes, finance things, uh, my business. So I have kind of my dream company, research on affiliates, all this kind of stuff. Videos, this is my most used kind of thing. And I use Thomas Frank's kind of pre-made thing for videos on the left here, uh, but it's fantastic. I have website notes, things to do for my website, podcast notes, guests, guests I wanna reach out to and kind of different ideas for that. Ideas I'm not gonna list that. This is probably my most used one, life. So each one of these is a different page. And for example, if I go into one of these pages, I can see kind of things I wanna do. So if I go into, for example, um, what's a good one to look at? So if I go into recipes, for example, you can see I have different recipes and under each of these recipes, I have a link of which one I wanna to go to. So I like to track what recipes I like and stuff like that. You can organize your studying, your life and your work with this fantastic application. But warning, it's kind of hard to get a basic understanding of how to use Notion. It's got a kind of steep learning curve. I strongly suggest checking out Thomas Frank's like intro and beginner's guide to Notion. It's what I use and it'll give you a great intro into everything you need to know on how to use Notion properly in the beginning. Here are some ways you can use Notion. You can do to-do lists, you can use calendars, you can make it a note taker for classes, you can build a wiki, you can build a standardized page. Like for example, for my pages, I've created some notes on kind of what to do for a personal assistant, what to do for an editor, because I have an editor right now and I love him and he does great stuff, but who knows, some things may change in the future. Maybe he finds a new job or he doesn't want to be an editor anymore. Well, then what I can do is I can just take these standard operating procedures and kind of give them to, to other people and you can do thousands of other things with Notion. The next application I wanna talk about is amphetamine. No, not the drug amphetamine, but this application. I was talking about doing something fun, Byron. Here we go. Oh, oh it's, an, it's an application up here on the top right. And the great thing about this application here is you can make basically your computer not go to sleep for a certain amount of time. And it's the best application there is for keeping your computer awake. And why is this important? Well, if you're downloading files from the internet or uploading files, especially when you're uploading files, you don't want your hard drives to sleep and you don't want your computer to go to sleep because that might mess with the upload, right? So what you can do is you can say, okay, I want my computer to stay awake for 24 hours. And then your computer will stay awake for 24 hours, but you can do certain things like allow the display to sleep so you don't burn into the LEDs on the screen. You can allow the screensaver to come in, come up. The other cool thing you can do it is you can say, okay, I want it to be my computer to never sleep while Adobe Photoshop's open or Final Cut Pro's open or when something's downloading. It's just, you can customize it pretty crazily. Another cool thing you can do, which I just discovered, now I don't work uh, a normal job, I'm in the hospital usually, um, but what you can do, I found other people like to do, is you can make kind of the cursor move, and I know this is important for some jobs. So you can have system control, you can have the screen lock after a certain amount of time, but you can move the cursor every one minute, you can do it after every five minutes of inactivity, and it'll basically move the cursor when you're not active on the computer, which might be helpful. Next, we have Bartender, which is this cool application that helps me minimize certain things on the top right of my screen, on the top right of my finder window here. So if I just open Bartender and then I quit it, I just wanna show you the difference kind of in the way it looks. So Bartender's gone now. Look at all this stuff I have on the top right corner of kind of my file right here. I'm just gonna enable Bartender to show you what it looks like when I put Bartender back on. 
So what I've done actually is I've gone to my bartender preferences and I've done certain things that I want to see. So there's certain things I always want to see. I always want to see my battery. I always want to see the kind of the date and the time, uh, but I don't really want to see always the Google Drive folder, the amphetamine thing, uh, my focus timer, Bluetooth, the Wi-Fi. There are things I never want to see because I just never click on those things. That's my day one journal here, uh, the magnet application, which I'll talk about soon, uh, and also Alfred over here on the, on, and, uh, the Creative Cloud. And it may seem silly kind of to have this thing just to adjust the tool bear on the top right, but the way I feel kind of with the computer is the way I feel kind of with general life in the apartment. If you have extra things, if you have extra distractions that are slowing you down, over time these things are going to add up and you're not going to be able to do as many things as you want to do, and it's almost going to detract from life. I know that's a big kind of statement for simplifying your toolbar on the top right here, but listen, if I want to find one of these things and there's like 900 other things along this bar on the top right, it's going to add a little bit of extra time for me to find the thing that I want to find which in the end is bad. And that's the whole point of this video, right? Making things a little bit speedier, a little bit more productive. The next application I want to talk about is Loom. And Loom is this amazing application because it records your screen and shares it instantly to the internet. Loom is great because you know you can record yourself and what you can do is say, okay, I wanted to record desktop one. Uh, we're gonna start recording in three, two, one, and then you have the little image of myself down here, and I'm talking and talking about certain things of the video. And say, for example, I don't like the way one of these things was edited, even though it was edited amazingly well, and I want to give some notes to my editor or something like that. What I can do is I can record this and say, okay, you see this part here, I want this to be blah, 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 and then I can show him what I actually do for future reference. And then, because I don't want my editor to just be watching me doing nothing for tons of time, what I can do is say, okay, I'm going to go see if I can find something else, hit pause, and then I'll go see over here oh, what I can do. Maybe I go over here. Maybe I go talk about this, this, this. Okay, I want to talk about this with him. Then I'll hit play and it'll keep recording again this certain part when I hit play. And then when you hit stop, it instantly uploads this thing straight to the internet where you can see kind of everything you need to see and share this with people. And it's a very streamlined way to share screen recordings with people you work with. A couple quick tips when using Loom, make sure your audio is recording properly. So when you go to Loom, you'll see kind of this little window pop up and the, the window will say, okay, you're recording from the studio display camera, the studio display micro, okay, that's good. And you can also hear the microphone levels or see the microphone levels going up and down to make sure you're recording the right thing, right? Because you want to be doing that. And then when you hit start recording, you want to make sure it's recording the right screen. So I want it to record this screen, right? So it's good that it's recording the screen as opposed to this other screen on the side here. I don't want it to record that screen. Finally, the only keybind that I really use all the time with Loom is you just do Option Shift P, and that'll pause the recording, or Option Shift P to play the recording and see the timer starts counting on here. Again, because usually the most times I use it right now is with Final Cut Pro, uh, and what you'll do is you'll go to one of these things and you'll say, okay, talk, blah, 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 talk, and I'll do Option Shift P, Option Shift P, uh, and that'll pause it, and then I'll say, okay, and no, then nothing here, nothing here, nothing here. Okay, I want to talk about this, and then you do Option Shift P, and then you'll talk about that more. As an advanced tip for Loom, it's a great thing to use for using standard operating procedures or SOPs. For example, I could use this for editing, I could use this for creating thumbnails, I could use this for managing my website, I could use this for kind of managing anything I want to do with my whole kind of Zach Hiley business. And then what I can do is I can create these links, I'll have these links forever, right? And I can go to Notion and say, okay, I want these standard operating procedures to be on something that I can send to everyone. So I'll go to my editing guidelines or my brand guidelines and put a link to that video. That way, whenever someone needs to access this, they can access it and kind of see the standardized methods. The next application I want to talk about is Magnet. And Magnet is a fantastic way to kind of pinch things to other side of the screens. So say, for example, I have these two finder windows here. I could just drag it to the left here. Bam, I can make that finder window over there. And then I have another finder window over here because I want to sort between these two finders. I can do that. Now, the way I most commonly actually use this is say I want to talk about the moon landing or something like that. So I'll have these two things over here and I want to type. So this is the one I want to have on the left because that's the one I'm mainly typing on. This is actually this post right here that I'm typing on. And then I have my research kind of on the right. Now, what I usually do is I like to have two thirds of my screen on the main thing I'm working on, and then one third of my screen on like the research, or I like to go half and half. So there's a good keybind for magnet, and the keybind for magnet for putting it on two thirds on the left is Control Option E, and you can see it just it automatically take up two thirds of the screen. And then if I want to go back to this thing here and put that on the right, it's just Control Option G and that'll put it a third of the screen right here, and that's perfect. You can also do Control Option Left Arrow to make it go on the left side of the screen here, or Control Option Right Arrow to make it do 50% of the screen. That's another quick way and great way to do it. So instead of just dragging and dropping, you can do this much, much more easily.
magnet is great. And of course, occasionally I use this other screen, but I really only like to use the screen for occasionally random things. I like to mainly focus and work from this one fantastic screen and then occasionally put things on the left. So, so again, control option E, we'll put it on the left. Control option G, we'll put it a third on the right. Control option left arrow, I don't know why it does that. Control option left arrow, make it 50% of the screen on the right. Control option right arrow, make it 50% of the screen on the right. So now let's talk about Numi Calculator. And you can see that I use, the, I use Alfred for everything. And Numi Calculator is just a fantastic kind of real world, real English way to kind of do calculations and math. You have the built-in kind of calculator from the app from, from Mac, but it's just, it's awful. Like you type something in and then you don't know like where it is, where the plus is, you don't know what you're dividing, you don't know what you're adding. I just, I just don't like it. I think it's too simple and I don't get to see like what I'm working with. So the great thing about Numi is that you can use simple things like simple calculations, like the way you would talk to a normal person. So for example, if I was saying like the cost of meal is $25, then the $25 comes there, right? Uh, and then for example, I wanted to say, okay, uh, plus tax and tip, which is 379. Uh, then I can say sum, and then I can say, okay, I want this, th this previous kind of thing, this sum to be divided among the four of my friends. So I'll say previous divided by four, bam. And now I know the cost is $7 and two cents to be divided among my friends. Now, of course you wouldn't be using that on this, but you can do tons and tons of different things. Like what is 11 inches in feet? and that's 0.92 feet. You could say, what is $1 in Euro? Bam. You're gonna just do tons of cool little things with this new me calculator. It's great, definitely get it. And finally, we have my 10th favorite app to maximize your productivity and to maximize your Mac, and that is NordVPN. With NordVPN, you can access Netflix from abroad, disguise your IP address, and protect against external attacks. So as you see, when you open NordVPN here, you can see kind of I'm unprotected, and all you do is you just hit quick connect wherever you are, and this will connect you to a virtual private network on your computer pretty fast. A VPN stands for a virtual private network, and all that means is it just gives you a more secure connection to the internet. The main reason I use a VPN is for kind of security, privacy, uh, and also accessing streaming services from other countries on the internet. And the most common time I use it, because I don't really need to use it when I'm sitting here in my apartment, is like when I'm at a coffee shop or when I'm at an airport or using any kind of public Wi-Fi. Because when you're on public Wi-Fi, especially one that's like not password encoded or whatever, it's really easy for other people to kind of see what your internet activity is. And I think Nord is actually the most cost effective and the most re reliable VPN there is out there. Beyond like kind of protecting your internet browsing stuff when you're kind of in these public shops, it's also really good like when you travel to another country, like if you wanna watch Netflix from England or Italy or something like that and you can't access the US Netflix, you can use like US Nord VPN here to ping your kind of IP address to the US and then you can access it from there, like I do. Or I can do it from the UK because now I'm in the UK and now I'm in the US and now I'm in the Ukraine and now I'm in Switzerland, it's cool. And this video is sponsored by NordVPN, but I've been using NordVPN for years before they reached out to sponsor me. NordVPN is great because it secures your connections from external attacks, all while maintaining breakneck speeds on your computer. NordVPN actually hides and encrypts your identity to, to protect you from malware. Also, you can use NordVPN to access better TV, movie, sports, or pretty much anything or any streaming platform that is unavailable in your country. So disguise your IP address, secure against external attacks, and access better streaming content with NordVPN. Go to nordvpn.com slash Zach to get a two year plan plus one month, all with a huge discount. Again, that's Zach with an H. And of course it's risk-free with Nord's 30 day money back guarantee. So you can try it out, see if you can access those streaming services. And if you don't like it, you know, return it. But I like it. I've been using NordVPN for like three, four, five years now. It's pretty good. But that is it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope these apps will help you because they definitely help me. Thank you for watching and I will see you on the next one. Hey Siri, what's two plus two? Really? You're nearly 30 years old, still in school, and still don't know what two plus two is? I'm removing myself from your phone, you sad excuse for a human. Goodbye.